After watching my video series on ACX, are you thinking about publishing your book to Audiobook Creation Exchange? Would you like to know what it looks like on the other side of producing audiobooks on ACX? Then you'll want to listen in on today's interview with radio DJ, audiobook narrator, and self-published author Pam Rossi. Stick around. Welcome to Self Publishing with Dale, and if you want to master DIY publishing, then subscribe and turn on your notifications for all the latest videos. Have you published an audiobook on ACX yet? If so, how did you do it? Did you hire a narrator or choose the 50-50 royalty split? Let me hear from you in the comments. Today, my special guest, Pam Rossi, has been a radio DJ for over 30 years, 17 of those as the host and producer of the acclaimed Over Easy show on WCSX in Detroit. Pam currently hosts Sunday Morning Brew on WOMC, Detroit's Greatest Hits. She honed her skills at a number of broadcast outlets as a disc jockey, a music director, producer, and a news traffic reporter. Her audiobook niche includes business, self-development, bios and memoirs, arts and entertainment, health and fitness, sports, and history. And that's just a sample of Pam's many talents and avenues. So rather than spoil everything, let's hear what she has to say. All right, welcome to Self Publishing with Dale, and I am very happy to bring to you a very special guest, someone I'm excited to bring on here, Pam Rossi. I, I've laid a little bit of the groundwork here already, talked a little bit about you, but uh, Pam, I would love for you to share with my audience who you are, what you're about, and how we know each other. Sure, absolutely. Um, first of all, thanks for having me on this. This is great. Uh, yeah, you and I connected through ACX. You put some books up there as the rights holder, and I auditioned, and next thing I know, I've done several books for you, uh, narrating them through ACX. And uh, so I'm happy about that, and uh, I always go back through. looks like they're doing very well, so uh, you're pretty good about taking care of that. But I also do, um, just as you mentioned, you know, what I do, I'm a radio disc jockey. I've been that for many, many years. That's the uh, focus of my career, but I've never had that full-time morning shift, that gig that everybody really wants, but I've been, you know, doing, uh, dabbling in radio for quite a while, so I'm happy about that, and with that in mind, you know, the voiceover kind of goes hand-in-hand hand with that, and so I have started my own business. Well, it's been going for a few years now. But I do voiceovers on the side uh, to benefit, you know, to, I do voiceovers on the side to uh, take care of the parts that I'm not working on the air. And there I use my voice in the same way, which I'm happy about. Now, is it just part-time work that you're doing with the radio or is that full-time work? It's part-time. Okay. And so, yeah, I have a special show that I do on the weekends and, uh, you know, it's a little different from the regular format that, I, you know, for some reason I get these special shows, which is great. You know, I love doing those. Uh, but it's, you know, obviously I need to do more. So during the week, I focus on my voiceovers and the audio books. Nice. Excellent. So uh, is, is, is working in the radio, is that kind of your dream job? Is that something you always had wanted to do? Well, not necessarily. I was basically <laughs> going into uh, college to do theater. And, you know, one thing led to another. And next thing I know, I'm in radio. And I just, you know, I have a BA in communications, not specifically radio. But, uh, you know, a friend of mine needed a female voice. He was doing something on the campus station. And that's where it started. So I was like, this is kind of cool, you know. And uh, from there, I just, I got a job right away before I graduated and uh, never looked back. So... So That's you right. must enjoy it to a certain extent then, right? Oh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> I'm throwing loaded grenades at you here. Of course, you're like, yeah, I love it, Dale. Thanks. I appreciate that. <laughs> of course, you yeah. get something different. <laughs> it, it's, just, it's really cool. You know, just, you know, change, radio, of course, has changed over the years. Yeah. Um, you know, everything changed in, you know, 08, and radio was one of those things. And, of course, people doing the uh, digital now. So, you know, things are a little different, you know, our competition with Sirius and all of that, but it's, radio is booming. It's still doing fantastic, and I'm glad to be part of it. So nice. I, I love it. Yeah. You, got, you, you have the, the perfect voice for it. Something I noticed in some of your audiobook um, creations with uh, our, our partnership is you have a very soothing voice. Yes. Um, it's funny because for some reason, I'm always on early morning, usually a Saturday morning or Sunday morning, and, you know, and a typical response is, you know, your voice is great for this early morning. I remember when I worked down in Ohio for a few years, 
this guy called up all the time. He goes, you're the best thing for a hangover. So, you know, he, you know, my voice <laughs> is soothing and, you know, thank, I thank the Lord that I have this voice. That's for sure. Um, yeah. And, and it works well with the type of audio books that I do also, yeah. you know, I love doing the, um, you know, the, the bios or the, um, you know, kind of the documentary type of things, the bios and the, the memoirs and that sort of thing. And, you know, I'm able to, uh, you know, my voice is, seems natural to listen to. It's soothing. So it helps, you know, I'm trying to explain someone's life or whatever, or the non-broadcast or non, you know, romantic type things. So it, it works. Nice. Uh, so uh, a question, what got you into ACX? Uh, how long have you been doing it for? And do you enjoy it? Yes. Um, actually, I've only been doing it a few years. So um, I'm trying to think if it's two or two and a half years, something like that. And uh, yeah, I love it just, you know, to get a book. And again, I really focus on the the, the more of the nonfiction books. I I hone into that, which is similar to what I do with voiceovers. I do the more of the non-broadcast, the, you know, training and e-learning. So this, those types of books uh, seem to work best for me. I enjoy doing those things. I feel like I'm helping someone learn something or explain something to them uh, and they can get something out of the book. So, um, so yeah, with the few years I've done, have been a lot of the nonfiction and just to, you know, get into a booth, my booth and, you know, just start reading. And I feel like I'm teaching somebody something or helping them explain something. You know, I've, I've learned, taught some of my books were, you know, how to train your puppy or how to, you know, get your relationship to stay where it should be or get it to become better uh, with your partner. So I feel good about being in the booth and reading these books and uh, helping someone. Do you ever learn something new when you're doing this? Oh, absolutely. Um, one of the last books I did, I thought, boy, I'd be doing really well in sports trivia. It was all about baseball heroes and the dead ball era. So I really learned a lot about Ty Cobb and Christy Mathewson and that whole concept. So I always learn something from each book. I mean, your books too, you know, I'm learning how to um, eat right, vegetarian and you know, and those types of things, you know, help my, you know, the self-help and all that. So absolutely, I've learned a lot since I do the books. Nice. Fantastic. Now, uh, so I know that you you and I have kind of spoke about this ahead of time. Um, I want to kind of share with the audience that you actually have outside of the audiobook experience, and we'll come back to that, I promise you. Uh, you have actually experience in self-publishing. Tell me a little bit about your history with self-publishing and where you're at right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my very first self-publishing experience was with my six six sisters. Hard to say. <laughs> I have I'm one of eight girls, so, um, so we put a book together. Uh, I'm half Polish, half Italian, so we put this great history cookbook together, and it's like you know 600 pages of of photos and recipes and stories. So that was the first experience. Even though I didn't do a lot of the self-publishing end of it, you know, my brother-in-laws took care of a lot of that. But it was a good exposure. Um, but then I did my own book um, from my radio experience. I did a book that I, uh, with, again, with my show, I was able to bring in a lot of musical guests. It was all about the music. That's what my show was. Um, the, unfortunately, the radio station got bought out. So, you know, I'm not doing that show anymore, although I have another show that's very similar. Yeah. But I was able to bring musical guests in. And they were local, they were national, international, and we'd just sit down and talk. They'd bring their guitar or their keyboard, and we'd chat. It was just a conversation. It was I like to say it was a conversation more than an interview, because we just talked like we were sitting in their living room, and it was so much fun. So I took those interviews. Mm -hmm. Of course, I had to get permission, not only from the radio station, but also I had to have signed releases from everybody, and I put all those into a book. So it was the actual recordings were transcribed and I put them into a book of our conversations of all these amazing uh, artists that I had on my show. Awesome. Now you've picked my curiosity, of course. What's the title of the book? Where can people find it? And as well, name drop. I I'd love to hear some names <laughs> that you actually had on your show. Well, uh, sure. I should have grabbed a book to be here in front of me. Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean... Um, Names like, uh, you know, and there are sections. There's rockers, there's singer-songwriters, there's blues, there's um, folk. So each of these sections, for example, um, Richie Havens, great interview. And, you know, he talked and talked. Richie Havens, if you're into folk, he was the very first man that opened up Woodstock. 
the first Woodstock. Wow. All right. There you we go. Great stories of that. I mean, um, you know, I've got the guy in uh, folk also from Peter, Paul and Mary. I have Peter Yarrow in there. Wow. And, yeah. See, look, now, now I got to get my mom on the show. She'll pop <laughs> big on that one. <laughs> and then, of course, there's rockers. There's so many rockers that did the solo stuff. So a lot of times they would on their solo tours or they had new CDs out and I would bring them in. Um, so, if, for example, I would have... Um, I'm drawing a blank. It's like this is, I should have had on spot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's so many. I've had uh, Jeff Daniels, the actor, you know, he's a musician as well. Yeah, he so, is. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh my God. He is, and he puts comedy in his, a lot of his music. He's so okay. fun to, to talk to. He was on there. I've had uh, Kathy McDonald, who was a background singer for the Rolling Stones, Joe Cocker. She was an Ike at for a while. Um, so Kathy was in there. Dan Fogelberg is in there. Um, there you go. Well, nice. Yeah. Uh, I've got, um, oh, some of the artists that I had in there, uh, Lawrence Juber, who was the lead guitarist for Paul McCartney's Wings. I've got Dave Mason, who was with Traffic. Um, there is uh, Yorma Kalkinen. He was Hot Tuna, as well as Jefferson Airplane and Starship. Melanie, we all know Melanie, brand new key. A brand new pair of roller skates. Um, Roger Glover of Deep Purple. So those are some of the nice. big names from um, oh, Roger McGuinn of the Birds. Those are a lot of the rockers. And then, um, then of course, I have the singer songwriters. I mentioned Dan Fogelberg, yeah. Al Stewart. I've got the, both guys from America. Um, gosh, who else? Drew Nelson, Jay Weber, um, Sally Taylor, uh, James Taylor, and Carly Simon's daughter. She uh, she was into the music for a long time. Okay. So I mean, there's just a gamut of people in this book. Let me see the uh, the publication. Could you hold it up for us? Yeah, this is. <laughs> wow! Oh my gosh, that is a thick book. It is, and uh, this is from the station. Those are, that's the actual board. I was you know um, pushing all the buttons on <laughs> and everything. So yeah, I mean, it's just loaded with pictures and the that's actual beautiful. Inter- from um, you know all these artists, it, it was a great, great project. And uh, take me through this project. Of course, you already talked about how you were able to get you know because you did it through interviews, and so you yeah. were able to put it on there. You got them to do the releases and such. Did you have to do the formatting for your paperback, or did somebody else do that? Walk me through that process. Yes, um, I did have an, uh, a publisher to start out with. Unfortunately, he has passed away. Not good. But um, but he pretty much did all the formatting for this. Thank goodness. I mean, I, I'm not a technical person. Give me a microphone. Don't let me engineer it. Uh, so I didn't have to do that. Um, I suppose if I needed to learn, you know, I could, but he handled that. So that was good. I just got took care of getting all the interviews from audio into print. That was a, a huge thing. And all the releases, of course. And then I wrote a lot of the introductions for each of the sections and each of the artists, I put a, a written introduction uh, before each one of those. So I put a little, you know, my opinion or, you know, kind of what we talked about or something like that. So that was a big part of it as well. Tremendous. Because I imagine, you know, you probably had some great interviews, but it probably was the things after or before the interviews that were the most intriguing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a lot of times I would tell um, tell someone, they start asking questions or whatever before the microphones are on. I go, hold that thought. <laughs> Don't say anything, you know, because I want to stop talking. I, I need to get this. <laughs> well, I want it to be, you know, more, um, you know, this is, this is really what they're all about. And I want to learn with them yeah. while the listeners are listening to this show and learn together. I don't want to learn of stuff beforehand. And it's like, oh, that would have been perfect, you know, for my listeners to hear instead of repeating it, whatever. So that's all I would do. I mean, this is such a brilliant idea that you were able to take interviews and actually put that into a book. And, and with the star power that's behind it, mm-hmm. uh, man, it just sells itself. So you really, yeah. outside of just probably having to put in a little spiel here and there, uh, it was probably a pretty easy process. Am I assuming wrong? I will not say easy. Okay. <laughs> I mean, this this is over 500 pages. Yeah, oh, and that's I true. had over 300 interviews. So I had to obviously boil it down because this is a, a big book. This is yeah. quite a large book. Uh, and actually, I cut out probably 100, 150 interviews that I couldn't have in here. You know, I was hoping to do a second book and, uh, you know, I didn't go that route, unfortunately, but I still have a number of interviews that I can put into a second book, maybe down the line. Yeah. Um, but I, 
you know, there's a lot of cutting and we had, you know, editing out, you know, a lot of the wordings too, because one line, you know, if I just said one or two words, that's a whole line. So, you know, it took up a lot of space. So there was a lot of editing to, um, you know, get this down to a reasonable amount of pages because, you know, that's, that's a huge book. This is a huge book. Yeah. And I saw it's full color too, right? Oh yes. Uh, yeah. Full color throughout, you know, we, we had to, well, there's Roger Glover. We had to, um, you know, I, we didn't want to just do something. I didn't want to do something that was just, I don't want to say half whatever, but you know, I wanted to, you know, Feel make, you're, you're okay. I can always hit the car horn on that. <laughs> Uh, I wanted it to be a, a good book, a good coffee table book. And this is something you can just pick up and go right to your favorite artist or, you know, read from front to back. So, you know, that's up to you. So how did you get this published? Uh, I know you said you had a gentleman that you did. Was it a traditional publishing model or was it just that he was a self-publisher that helped you get that up? Uh, he was an independent publisher. Oh, excellent. Okay. Independent publisher, um, and he, I actually knew him from, uh, he brought uh, someone on as a guest to one of my internet shows who was an author that he published his book. So we started talking, and that's how I got to know him. So he was an independent publisher, um, and so he's the one that helped me put this together. I didn't have a clue, you know, to be honest of how to put this together. So. so was there any kind of cost that you had to do? Did you have to hire him or was this kind of a quid pro quo where you just exchange favor for favor on that? No, um, I, I paid. <laughs> you okay. know? Well, it's so, definitely worth it because that's a, that's a stellar product already, I can see. Thank you, yes. So, you know, you know I just, I, I took care of the printing and, you know, um, the editing part of it. So, you know, I did put money up front for it. And again, that's another thing. I didn't know how that really worked yeah, I was supposed to do that or not do that, um, but at this point, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So, um, uh, who who published the actual book? Did he hire a third party out to publish the the hardback or the uh, paperbacks for you? No, he actually did that. He oh, did wow! That. So he actually had presses and everything then. Uh, well, I take that back. I'm I'm with uh, Ingram Spark. Oh, tremendous! Great, great company. Great yes, company. So they're the ones that do the printing and, you know, the on demand for when I want to get more books printed up. So uh, he took care of the, the marketing and, you know, the edit or the um, formatting, that sort of thing. I pretty much did all the editing and then, you know, he just put my notes into, you know, go to page, whatever, change the spelling of this guy's name. So that's, we kind of worked as a team together to get this out. Tremendous. So question for you, since it was done through Ingram Spark, I know Ingram Spark actually has a deal where you can distribute your uh, books out into uh, brick and mortar stores like Barnes and Noble and some mm -hmm. smaller online or uh, smaller retailers, excuse me. Uh, so can somebody find that book in the stores or do you have the exclusive? Um, it is not in stores. Again, you know, my publisher was going to work on that and things changed. So it never got to that point, and um, you know I'm trying to work on a children's book series, so I didn't go that end of it with this. So right now you can get this through my website or through Amazon. Excellent, and your website is of course pamrossi.com. Excellent. Hopefully we'll double back around, and I'll also <laughs> say something here towards uh, after the interview and such, so that way everybody knows where they can pick up that because I think it's just a, a phenomenal book that you have there. So. You started to tap into something that really got my interest, and it's children's books. Yes. Tell me exactly what are your plans are, and how soon do you anticipate in launching something like that? Well, um, a funny thing is my granddaughter, when she was one and a half, had to wear an eye patch. So I took that concept, and I've got a whole series of kids' books coming out. They're concept books, because I made one up just through Etsy of um, these of stuffed animals with the eye patch. So I comport, put all those things together and I'm working on these children's books. I have not got to the point where I'm printing them up yet. Um, I was trying to do the actual pictures, but there was a whole bunch of copyright stuff that I was like, I can't really deal with this. I don't want to have to deal with these animals and, you know, Ty coming back and, you know, saying, that's our dog. You can't do that. So I'm trying to work with an illustrator at this point instead of doing the actual photos, which is how I'd made the first book with Etsy for my granddaughter. And um, okay. so 
so that's what the, right now, and I'm actually thinking of doing a GoFundMe so I can take care of an illustrator, a printer, you know, and all of those things to get my books out. Tremendous. I definitely would love to hear the updates on how the GoFundMe goes, because I know that there's a lot of people out there, uh, self-publishers more importantly, that sometimes are um, cash deficient. So they are not able to start up certain projects. So I would love to hear how GoFundMe does, or if you do use a Kickstarter, that would be tremendous. Um, a good friend of mine and a friend of the show, Tim Knox, is actually even talking about putting out an irreverent adult humor style um, <laughs> kids book. And, oh, okay. uh, yeah, hopefully we'll we'll fill everybody in on that. But we were talking about Kickstarter and such, and he was, you know, wanting me to help him out. So um, let's double back around. I want to talk about ACX because you're kind of my go-to resource here. And you're the first person I brought onto this show that has some experience in this. So I know what it's like on the publisher end of things, <laughs> the rights owner, if you will. Uh, but I don't know what it's like for you on the narration side. So how does that work? Do you, do you, how do you set up your account? How do you find gigs? How do you upload? So on and so forth. Walk me through that. Sure. Uh, the, the first thing, obviously, is set up your account. So I did that. And you, you, you want to make sure that you've got things in your profile, you know, the keywords, so people can find you when they're looking for a specific narrator. And that's what we're considered as narrators. And um, so you can someone can pinpoint you very easily. That's one way they, the rights holder will find you. Uh, and I've only had a couple that found me that way. Maybe I should go back and change my keywords a little more, but um, you know, I've been busy enough that it, you know, it's been okay. The other way is as a narrator, I can go in and basically do a search. So, you know, obviously I check off female and the voice, you know, I kind of keep a bigger range. Um, people say I sound younger than I am, which is good. <laughs> you know, um, So you just do a range of what your voice range would be. Um, you can do, you know, if you have other languages that you can speak, you know, of course, I'm just English. So, uh, you know, that takes care of a few. Um, and then you can go into the different genres. And I, again, again like the nonfiction, the business, the self-help, um, the bios and the memoir. So I'll just click all those and then these things pop up with all these different books that you can audition for and you basically you know you just go through and you read through them and pick the ones that you know that i would want to audition for and when i do click on the particular book you know i'm looking for some things as well you know does the rights holder uh, have different social media platforms because are they going to promote this book it's nothing worse than you, you know, do a book and then there's no promotion for it. So someone needs to have followers and, you know, you, you go on their Amazon page. This is what I do. You know, I go on their Amazon page and see, you know, what, what kind of author they are or rights holder that they are. And how is this book doing? Because many times it's done in print way before the audio is done or an ebook is done before the audio is done. Even though audio is becoming, you know, like the number one way people want to indulge into a book so yeah you know you if you don't if you have a, if you're an author or a rights holder and you don't have an audiobook you need to jump on it and you know i'm sure you can uh put some comment on that as well 100 percent agreed actually i think i have some st statistics here oh, okay and cool. uh, bear with me just two seconds i know and that this this will really help kind of hopefully people will reach out to you based on the statistic actually over the past year uh audiobook audiobooks have increased by 28 actually nearly 29% in sales revenue and nearly $75 million. That's in the last year. Ooh. So Ooh. it's a huge, huge opportunity. Compare that to ebook, which everybody's going crazy over, and mm -hmm. that actually dropped by 5%. Uh, and, but it's still making about just short of $300 million. But nonetheless, you're right. Audiobook's huge. huge. A lot more people are paying attention to it. And uh, I, this is just a lucrative opportunity. So yeah, you you are right. Um, well, I think it's part of it is because people are so busy nowadays. So people are listening while they're working out or in the car. You know, we're multitasking, and that's when people are listening to these books. So because of that, more people are getting the ebook or excuse me, the audiobooks 
as opposed to the print. Can't drive and read at the same time, you know? Uh, wait, Pam, what are you telling me? I can't <laughs> drive and read? That's it. This Dale. interview is over. <laughs> no, no, no. You're in safe company here. Actually, I was, uh, I was actually at the gym today listening to a Tony Robbins book. So there you go. Uh, I, I, that's where I, I love to listen to my audio books and sometimes when I'm doing formatting for some books. Uh, so as a narrator and sometimes they'll say voiceover talent if, if people are kind of getting confused it's pretty much one and the Thank same you. if I happen yeah. to say that mm -hmm. um, I'm so used to just saying voiceover talent is so forgive me uh, but Definitely. any rate you as a narrator what specifically can make your life easier so if I'm approaching you about possibly utilizing my book or not utilizing um narrating my book mm -hmm. Yes. What, what is going to entice you to do that and what's going to make it easier for you? Well, uh, first of all, if I get an audition script, I mean, they're always there. When you go to, you go to audition, it's automatically there. So you, they know, you know, they can hear everybody doing the same script. If there's a bunch of typos in there or grammar mistakes, it's like, okay, this is a good indication of what the book is. I'm, I'll probably pass on that. Um, so just be aware that you know, you need to edit your book before you put it out there to be narrated. Uh, you know, that's the first thing. Uh, also, someone asked me to do a book that was, and we go by paid finished hour. Someone said their finished hour book, and it's a number of words. It's how they determine how many hours it'll be done. Yeah. And this book was 40 hours. And I said, no, because it was a Woo! royal fair only. Uh -uh. So, yeah, it's like, uh, sorry, I can't do that. Because first of all, um, for every hour of finished recording, generally takes two to three hours to do. Wow. So the finish, and don't be afraid, I've, I've kind of shared this in previous videos. So in order to, when I hear an hour of a book, okay, mm -hmm. on here, it probably takes you two to three hours to actually produce it then. Correct. Correct. Wow. So it's not so, just a simple thing of just talking into oh, a microphone, no. <laughs> uploading it and calling it a day. And, and you, cannot, uh, you cannot read for more than three hours. Most voiceover people will not do that. That's just a strain on your voice. Um, so you can only go so long in a day recording. But then you, got to, you have to edit. You have to make sure before you start recording that you're saying all the words right, the names, the pronunciations. You have to research all of that. Uh, some narrators will read the whole book first. I, I'll be honest, I don't do that. I'll read sections. Mm -hmm. if I you know, need to get a gist of what's going on or whatever. But with nonfiction, it's not as important as you know, a fiction because you need to know what's the character's, you know, his whole concept. But you know, all that has to be taken into consideration to get one hour of finished recording. That is, that is hard work. So I know that sometimes people get sticker shock, but can you give me a general finished price per hour that most narrators will run, not specifically you, but just the mm -hmm. industry in general? Sure. Uh, there's someone who maybe just starting out will, will do, you know, $100 an hour just to get some experience and, you know, get something on the books for them. But a, a good narrator, an experienced good narrator, you're talking two to two to five hundred dollars an hour per finished hour. Per finished hour, and of yes. course, that if that breaks down into two to three hours per mm -hmm. that, I mean, that's still pretty darn reasonable when you oh. think about it. All the work. Yes, that's <laughs> I think so. Yeah. So um, and now uh, we started talking a little bit about the fifty-fifty split. Uh, walk me through that. Uh, what what is what is so enticing about 50-50 split to you as a narrator uh, rather than, say, the finished price per hour? Well, what I'll do is sometimes if it's a book that I really feel good about, um, that I will enjoy doing, I try to get an author or a rights holder to do maybe a stipend um, or a hybrid, which means you still get uh, the paid for the PFH per finished hour price, but they give you something up front as well, like they'll share some of the royalty. Won't be as much, and ACX has the, the uh, how they figure that out or whatever, but it's something you work with ahead of time with your rights holder 
to you know get this offer because we don't get paid until a book sells if we do rights uh, holder or uh, royalty share if we do royalty share we don't get money till a book is sold which is you know I mean we've already put in so many hours you know you even if it's a small book we still have put in quite a few hours um, but we won't see anything for a while so that's the one thing you know with the royalty share you know you got you have to wait you don't get paid till a book sells but you know and then there's only a window of seven years after seven years we get nothing any that's it ACX has a seven year deadline tremendous you know what this is a first on the channel ever done you've just told me something new I did not I was not aware of that and here actually I've been signing off on the agreements this whole time so you only have that seven year window and in that event you and I probably would if, if you want something you can probably just broker something with me after that seven year deal then yeah, we'd have to be between you and I. ACX is done with me. <laughs> ACX is just their hands are washed. So it sounds almost like the the same thing that's uh, same model that's done through Babel Cube, which Babel Cube is a translation service, mm -hmm. and you do a royalty split with the translators. Yeah. Uh, wow, that is tremendous. I'm glad you actually have informed me of that. That this is a first. I can't thank you enough. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's, you know, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's uh, accurate. So uh, unless they've changed things or whatever, and you know, so it, ACX is a great tool. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But it'd be nice if they could, you know, weave in a few other things to help out um, the narrators. So my opinion. Yeah. No, no doubt, actually, because I know that uh, just speaking on behalf of both you and I, ACX takes a greater portion of the royalties at 60%. We're only left with 40% to split between ourselves. Yes. Um, but the one nice thing is, is uh, hopefully you can kind of share a little bit about this. I've talked about this before, is the bounty program. What is the bounty program on ACX and how does it benefit you and I? Uh, the bounty program is uh, where each, each book that's sold, if someone is new to ACX, then they can do it as a bounty, and there's a bigger amount of money that we each get if there's someone does it as a bounty. So bounties are good. <laughs> we like bounties. Bounties are nice. Yes, I know you probably do the same thing where you open up reports and you go, yes, yes. <laughs> a bounty. Oh my gosh, yay! <laughs> you know, uh, split between the two of us. So in our project, sometimes when we see that bounty, uh, so what happens is somebody um, opts into an Audible membership because mm -hmm. of our book. So yeah. let's just say, for instance, I've got a vegan cookbook between you and I. Uh, someone sees that, they go, oh, I want to get an Audible membership. They go ahead and get that and they stay on. We get a $50 bonus. And of course, we get to split that in two. That's $25, which I'm is- I'm happy to split with you, Dale. <laughs> yeah, $25. Shoot, I'll split that all day long, let me yeah. tell you. Because, I mean, that's, that's the thing is we can look at, say, a book that costs uh, $4.95. Mm -hmm. well, we're only going to see 40%, then we've got to split that 40% between the two of us. So at that point, we're just almost stacking pennies. Yes. But, you know, once when we look at the bounty, though, that's yes. where it's really, really worth it. So I definitely would uh, love to sit down with somebody that actually has some more experience and hopefully eventually I'll get them onto the show and I'll get them connected with you because uh, I know some people that are making anywhere from 1000 to $10,000 per month in the bounty program alone. That's uh, that is amazing, and I have not seen it. <laughs> so uh, you know, hopefully that'll be coming along. But which is the the bounty is really cool too, because you know the statistics you said earlier about more people doing audiobooks. There's more people getting in introduced to audiobooks now, so the bounty is perfect there. Uh, so a uh, question now, uh, knowing the ACX hangups that we, we were kind of bringing, so some people might kind of go, eh, I don't know about 40% royalty. Are there other options that you have entertained? And if so, uh, what are they? There are other options. And I, I will be honest, I have not pursued those at this point, probably because of these other books I'm trying to work with. Yeah. But I have a list going. There's probably a good 10 other uh, places that you can put your books in audio. So, um, you know, I apologize. I don't have the list in front no, of me. No, a okay. A okay. Uh, so have but you there are other options and I am trying to look into those because, you know, again, you know, when the seven years is up for each book or, you know, constantly getting books, you know, there's, I want to be able to get more books that I right away get the 
paid per finished hour rate right up front. Yeah. As opposed to just waiting and, you know, whatever, especially the books that I don't feel will sell a ton. You know, yeah. I would rather have a, a PFH for that right away. Yeah, that's so so understandable. Um, a couple of them I, I know right off the top of my head, and uh, tell me if you've heard them before. Uh, a big shout out to one of my uh, loyal viewers, uh, Sunny Ade, actually had dropped this one to me about last week. It's called Authors Republic, and yes, I have heard I've it. seen uh, Authors Republic has a huge, huge, extensive uh, reach. So it's just beyond even the three platforms of, you know, ACX has Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, mm -hmm. whereas Authors Republic goes further beyond. Uh, but Sunny didn't speak too highly of it. Like, it's just kind of like, eh, not really sure. So, um, and then there was uh, Find Away Voices. Our friends over at Draft the Digital, big shout out to my boy Kevin Tomlinson out in Draft the Digital. Uh, they have Find Away Voices, and that is uh, one of them that, there is no royalty split or anything else like that. It is finished price per hour. Yeah. I know a couple of people are kind of hung up on that. They're like, oh, but, but, but they're forgetting that there is a human attached <laughs> to the other side of this deal that they actually need to make a living too. So yeah. uh, that's yeah. hopefully by me introducing you to my audience here that they understand that, you know, that somebody needs to be, you know, taken care of on the other side. So and that's why hopefully I'm able to kind of bring them out here. So we're starting to wrap things up here. I want to thank you very much for taking your time. Is there any way that people can get a hold of you? And of course, uh, give me a little bit more information how people can get their hands on your book again. Sure. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, again, you go to my website. It's Pam Rossi, P-A-M-R-O-S-S-I, -S -S like Martini and Rossi. <laughs> Uh, the, dot com and everything is there. My voiceover stuff, my books, you can order it through that. And then the book is also on Amazon at this point. Wonderful. And the name of the book is? Over Easy Conversations with Pam Rossi. Wonderful. Excellent. Very, <laughs> I, I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, hopefully uh, we can give enough information. And if uh, some of the viewers have some other questions, uh, they can reach you over at pamrossi.com. Once again, yes. thank you very much. Stick around because I'm getting ready to disconnect here and we'll just kind of uh, debrief after this. So thank okay. you very much everybody for tuning in. A big thank you again to Pam Rossi for spending a little time with us today. Make sure you visit Pam at her website at pamrossi.com to get more information about her voiceover work. That's it for today. Hey, if you enjoyed today's interview, then make sure you tune in next Friday for another special guest. Till later, this has been Self Publishing with Dale. I'll see you guys soon.